Welcome to Scotland, where you join us in search of an answer to a rather unusual question. Can an event be more than just an event? Well, the people at Visit Scotland certainly think it can. They've launched something called a policy-driven model, which exists to influence change and make events more purposeful, to give something back to society and local communities. But how on earth are they going to do that? This is McEwen Hall, part of the University of Edinburgh, built in the 1890s by the McEwen family, famous brewers if you like your beer history. It was built originally for university graduates so they could have a ceremony in style and today is used for conferences and meetings. So where better to learn about event legacy than in a building that was built with that in mind? This is Neil Brownlee, Head of Business Events at Visit Scotland and the man behind a new philosophy of bringing events to the country, the policy-driven model. So Neil, can you tell me more about Visit Scotland's policy-driven model? Certainly, the policy-driven model is the replacement for what was the traditional tourism model, uh, which was marketing Scotland as a business events destination based on our natural landscapes, our stately homes, our whiskey, our bagpipes, let's be honest, and also um, tartan and the traditional delegate experience offering. The policy driven model changes that to a higher strategic level and this is about pursuing business events aligned to Scotland's ambitions at a national level. So there's a lot going on there, how does it work in practice? One of the challenges I have at the moment is when I'm dealing with stakeholders within government and elsewhere is not to overcomplicate it. Uh, so we have 40 directorates in the Scottish Government we have perhaps 100 sectors that Scotland is pursuing and you and I know, our audiences know that business events, they hit literally any number of policy areas or sectors or areas of academic speciality. So the trick is to work out what the priorities are within Scotland and work out how to align them to the relevant uh, business events that are being pursued, not necessarily by myself and my team at Visit Scotland Business Events, but our partners in the convention bureaus and the major venues and usually in conjunction with our academic um, stakeholders as well and a key thing is that we're not trying to we're not saying that every single business event coming to Scotland is a policy platform uh, not every business event is going to change the world but it's trying to home in on the five percent that we can agree in conjunction with stakeholders from the academic community and government policy colleagues that they are worth pursuing and they probably do come with a price tag. That's the other key thing. But as, if they are the right platform, the right kind of event with the right delegate profile, they can help position Scotland on the global stage as a good citizen, as a global leader, and in, indeed just solve one of the world's problems by bringing the experts to Scotland or discussing it in Scotland and really using business events as the social ec economic catalysts we know they can be. So what does this mean then for organisers wishing to bring their events to Scotland? I think for organisers it's important not to scare them off as well. What we're saying is let us tell us what the event is, possibly through the Convention Bureau, and then we will work out the policy connections for them. And that's especially important if, if there is a view to perhaps securing some funding centrally at local level or national level we can help demonstrate to them what their policy impacts might be. Rory Archibald is also part of the Visit Scotland team, acting as head of associations and sectors. Legacy has been top of his agenda for some time, and in an age where sustainability is now a necessity, says it matters more than ever. Last year, Visit Scotland launched the campaign Journey to Change. Tell us a little bit more about that. What did it bring? Journey to Change is Scotland's message to the world on the type of country we are and the type of country we can be. Everything from eradicating poverty, um, universal health care, universal education and gender equality. It recognises the importance that business events have on um, creating change. When you bring world leaders together, when you bring industry leaders together, you can find global solutions to global problems. And Journey to Change recognises that importance and how critical it is to meet face to face, to see eye to eye. So how can business events then drive socio-economic change in Scotland? It's such a simple concept. It's everything from the really small decisions you make, um, deciding if you're going to support social enterprises within the local community, how you engage within the local community, within your area of expertise. 
If you are from the corporate incentive or associations world, how do we involve young people within the communities to really discover those next generations? How do we work with universities to discover that next big idea? By collaborating, we can create amazing things and create real social change within communities in Scotland and around the world. So tell us about the UN Sustainable Development Goals. How can organisations leverage those to influence change? The UN SDGs are signposts from before the event even takes place to during the event and afterwards. From the, all the decisions that you make on how you make your event as sustainable as possible, how you involve the community, how you make sure that everybody feels welcome and everyone is recognised, the UN SDGs are going to be integral for creating positive change within the events industry and within society in general. There are 17 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and what they offer really is a framework, guidance in how we can all give back to society. It's not just about environmental matters, of course that is very high up the agenda, but it's about eliminating poverty, gender equality and basically giving something back to give us a better world. And it really is no exaggeration to say that business events are a core part of that strategy. Catherine Nellis, Visit Scotland's Corporate and Incentive Market Manager for the South of the UK and Ireland, notes the importance of corporate and incentive opportunities in Scotland and their socio-economic impact. So Katie, tell us more about how a corporate or incentive event can give something back to its community. Well, there's so many ways that can happen. It could either be through social enterprises where they're working with local soup kitchens or local communities, or even through education where they're working with young people in the community and really educating them on their sector. So there's so many ways that they can get involved. So tell me then, why is it important for an event to be purposeful now? I think now that we're coming into recovery, it's so much more than just going into a venue or into a location and just taking from it. You need to really be leaving a legacy with the event that you're having, because then that puts on actual impacts in the future where it will actually grow from that one event. So why is Scotland a sensible destination of choice for any organiser who really wants to feed legacy into the core of their event? Well, I think we're leaders in so many industries and what we're doing is really cutting edge. So it's really great that we're involved in so many aspects and so many sectors that there literally is something for everyone. And we're a great resource where we can make connections to really help enhance the programme and actually their legacy. Amanda Ferguson is the Head of Business Development at the University of Edinburgh. She tells me how the university engages with business events ambassadors, the role of educational institutes and the renewed appreciation of knowledge sharing and upskilling. Amanda, tell us how the university works with ambassadors to bring in business events. Well, business event ambassadors, the majority of them are academics. So obviously as the largest university in the city, we've got quite a few of those. <laughs> we've got nearly 8,000 academic staff within the university and over 6,000 postgraduate research students. So we've got plenty of potential ambassadors sitting there um, within our own internal market. We're also very fortunate that the university is tremendously supportive of conferences for the individual professional development of the academics and also encourages them to host conferences because they recognise how important it is for each research centre in terms of establishing their position in that field. We've just launched a new initiative, the University of Edinburgh Conference Alliance, providing support for academics who are bidding for conferences. Um, facilitating that peer-to-peer -peer networking that needs to happen and also essentially nurturing that pipeline of future ambassadors because we all know uh, this business is very long term and you can be bidding for conferences several years out and traditionally it tends to be more senior academics who champion these large conference bids and we need to be looking to the future and looking at early career academics as well and supporting them to, to hold smaller symposia or workshops to cut their teeth on that before they move up to the bigger conferences. This is Gordon Hodge, Head of Conferencing and Events at the University of Strathclyde. It's yet another example of how a university can leverage specialists to create new conferences for experts in their field. 
So how do you link the university's research and innovation to the events that you run on campus? So we work pretty much all the time with our academic community and sometimes we work, um, sometimes that's through networks that we have already, sometimes it's people that we worked with before, and um, sometimes that would be people reaching out speculatively to us. Um, we do a little bit of kind of internal marketing, so by email, by social media and stuff. Uh, we have a newer kind of conference management um, product which uh, does abstract management, registration, websites and, and online events as well, so that's given us a new reason to um, to reach out. So we're kind of working with the academic community all the time on things that they want to do and also with their industrial partners as well. So can you give me an example of an event that you've run on campus that's really channeled the expertise of the university and what sort of legacy did that bring? So we worked in 2018 uh, with Professor Duncan Graham who's now the Executive Dean of the Faculty of Science um, and he leads a group looking at kind of nanotechnology and nanochemistry um, which I kind of looked at is, the, is, is basically detecting Thing, it, it, looking for very small things and using them for things like disease detection, um, cancer detection, that kind of thing. Um, and so they went to the Royal Society of Chemistry, who were involved with that event, and asked if they could use the SciX brand for this new event, which they called Spring SciX. So we worked with Duncan to make sure that the venue could host it. We then put him in touch with the Convention Bureau in Glasgow, who helped put together a, a bid from the city which went off to SciX and to the Royal Society of Chemistry um, and that went ahead in April of 2019 and they had about 200 early career researchers with more experienced people in the field speaking to them and I had I was following the Twitter feed and one of our um, PhDs in uh, nanochemistry tweeted you know it was her first experience at an in-person conference and she had loved the opportunity to talk about her work and to present and to hear from others and she was really looking forward to doing it again so it's really nice to think that that event started with colleagues at Strathclyde and now has a life of its own. Back in November 2021, COP26 took place here in Scotland at the SEC in Glasgow. While it was a UK hosted event, it was the biggest event Scotland has ever seen. More than 190 leaders from around the world came to Glasgow armed with thousands upon thousands of delegates. As an event in itself, it was impressive enough, but what it stood for and the legacy, well, that's going to change all of our lives. COP26 might be an extreme example of how an event can leave a lasting legacy. Lawrence Brown, co-founder of A3 Scotland, is perhaps an example of an organiser running a new type of science conference, the type of which better illustrates the power of events on a more practical level. So Lawrence, you co-created Scotland's first event dedicated to animal health, agritech and the aquaculture sectors. You know, why is it important that Scotland invest in this conference? So Scotland is a world leader across the AAA sector. So that's animal health, agri-tech and aquaculture. We have one of the largest animal science communities in the world. We have a thriving aquaculture industry and we have agri-tech companies, pioneers that are expanding around the globe. It's my belief that Scotland will play a leading role in sustainable food security around the world. By 2050, we're gonna have 10 billion mouths to feed. And we need to do that in a way that is safe, that is healthy, that is cost effective, uh, and that has a neutral or a net positive impact on the planet. So our hope is that A3 Scotland 2022 will have contributed to investment, innovation and collaboration across animal health, agri-tech and aquaculture. And this will lead to the development of new technologies and new solutions that will lead to sustainable food security. So how have you worked with Scotland's academia and other organisations to really make this event work? And how will delegates benefit from the collaboration? We have a fantastic organising committee and we've been able to bring together the leading research institutes and economic development bodies to help organise this event. Uh, for example, uh, Scotland's Rural College, Morden, the Rosen Institute, as well as uh, HIE, who are the Highlands and Islands Enterprise. We've been working really closely with the UK agri-tech centres that have invested heavily in Scotland and we're absolutely thrilled to be able to secure Zoetis, the world's largest animal health company, as our platinum partner for this event, which for me really illustrates the local potential for new innovations and new enterprise in this space. Nothing like this had ever been done before in Scotland. So not only have we seen more international collaboration as a result of this event, we've also seen a number of local partnerships uh, thanks to this inaugural not-for-profit conference. 
It's an exciting new era for Scotland's conference industry, and in an age when legacy is a defining factor, the new policy-driven model will ensure that the events coming to Scotland are for the greater good of everyone.